Hey YouTube, this is Insco with Insco's Adventures. Today, I'm going to be doing a two boat review. I'm going to be reviewing both of these boats. I have been kayaking now for a year, well, actually a little over a year, and have these two kayaks. And a lot of people have asked, you know, what's really the difference between a longer kayak, a sea kayak, and the shorter recreational kayaks. And if you're new to kayaking, you wanna know what's the difference? Uh, well, this is what it's all about. So we'll get started with a Zydeco. This is an 11 foot long kayak made by Dagger. It is the Zydeco 11.0. It's 11 foot kayak. This is the very first kayak that I got. So here are the pro and the cons on this boat first of all the biggest pro as you see this boat is like 26 27 inches wide i don't remember the exact diameter but this is a very very stable boat this boat if you're a new kayaker you're thinking about getting into paddling this is the perfect boat to get started with why well it's not that long and it is super stable this has what they call primary stability this boat will be almost impossible to dip to to tip over because it is so wide the seat is extremely comfortable i just washed it out if you see some water in there um it has storage back here in the back you got a hatch you can store some stuff you can take some stuff with you and so the biggest pro about this boat is that it is just incredibly stable um, my wife went out in this one time my wife and i we went out to lake ufala we got in this she got in this boat she had a good time because it doesn't really give you that feeling that you're going to tip that you're going to go over it's just super stable but there here comes the con on this boat or the thing against this boat what i don't like about the boat because the boat is only 11 feet long this boat is slow it is incredibly slow the other thing that I did not like about this boat is because it is so short, only 11 feet long, um, it's half of the battle when you're out paddling this boat is trying to keep it in a straight line. This boat is really hard. It does not track very well. So I would be out on a lake paddling and man, just keeping the boat to go in a straight line could be very, very, very challenging. And if I wanted to cover, say, if I'm on a, a, a rather big lake a large lake if i wanted to cover a lot of area in a short period of time it was almost impossible because this boat it gives up um, this tracking ability of going in a, in a pretty good straight line and it gives up speed for the width so if you don't really care about going out exploring and going out you know long distances on a kayak you care more about the stability and about not having that feeling that you're going to tip over. This would be the boat for you to start with. This is the Dagger, again, Dagger Zydeco 11.0. There's a lot of kayaks, recreational kayaks that are 10 feet long. This is an 11 footer, so you get that extra foot. Um, and like I said, it's got storage. It is a very comfortable boat to paddle. So the Pro, very stable, very safe. Um, one time I even had my little niece, uh, she was in this boat with me uh, and man, said she was sitting in front of me and it, it, there was no problem at all. This boat is so stable. Um, again, the, now the thing against this boat is it's gonna be really slow and it's gonna be a little bit harder to track because it is shorter, it's not as long. And that is my review of the Dagger Zydeco 11.0. Now let's go over to the Wilderness System Tempest 170. Next up, we have the Tempest 170 by Wilderness Systems. And there, you, of course, you have uh, Insco's Adventures. Um, so this boat right here is a completely different beast. Like I said, this is the Tempest 170. And we'll talk a little bit after a, about a year of kayaking in this boat, why when I go out paddling, I take this one instead of the dagger that's over there. Well, the reason is, talk about some of the, well, let's talk with the cons or some of the things that this boat, the disadvantage of this boat. Well, the first, and I think the only real disadvantage of this boat is it has horrible primary stability, has great secondary stability. And what does that mean? Well, when you're in this boat, it gives you the feeling that the boat is going to tip 
Uh, like I was saying earlier with the dagger, my wife and I, we went out to Lake Eufaula here in Oklahoma. She got in this boat. Fortunately, we were only like in two feet of water, two, three feet of water, and she went up maybe 15 feet and she, she tipped the boat. So this boat has this feeling that it's going to tip, but it has great secondary stability, which means this boat wants to stay right side up. It really does want to stay right side up, but it gives you that feeling, and a lot of people go by what they feel. It gives you that feeling like it is going to tip. I remember the first time I went out in this boat on Draper Lake here in Oklahoma City. Uh, it scared the crap out of me. I, I really thought I was going to tip, but after kayaking it for a year, this boat has not tipped at all. It really wants to stay up. That is really the only thing. I guess the other thing that I maybe don't like about this boat is the seat. Now, the seat where you sit your butt on, the bottom part is great, but it's this part right here, the backrest. It's just not that comfortable. The backrest is, I wish it was a little bit higher. Um, it does not give my back, uh, uh, I'm not really comfortable. It doesn't give me the support that I need. I wish, I wish it was a little bit higher. Um, I, I've added, I have like one of those uh, cloth stadium seats that I'll stick in there and I kinda, it kind of gives me more support. Um, so I would say the lack of primary stability gives you the feeling that it's going to tip as well as the back seat, the back of the seat, the seat back. That would be it. Other than that, this boat is amazing. This boat tracks like you cannot imagine. It tracks in a straight line. Now, this boat also has a skeg. And a skeg, imagine it's like a, a, a rotor, a rudder, that comes out of the back of the boat underneath. And you can raise or lower the skeg with this little switch right here. And it's stationary. It means it's similar to a rudder, but it's not a rudder and that it does not move. But what it does, when you put the skeg down, it's almost hard to get this boat to turn right or left. It is gonna go in a straight line. Next thing I like about this boat after kayaking in it for almost a year is that it is fast. So if you take this boat and you were to line it up with the dagger over there and put them side by side, I think if you paddle just one time, just one paddle in the water, this boat would go two or three boat lengths further than the dagger would. So if you're wanting to cover a lot of space, a lot of area, you want to get out there, you want to tour, you want to go on adventures, you want to explore, you want to cover a lot of water in a short period of time, this is the boat that you would want to get. It has three hatches. It has a hatch right there and it goes from right about here all the way to the front of the boat. It has a lot of room for storage, a dry hatch. It's got a day hatch right here that it's kind of close to the seat. I guess you could, you, know, some, you can you know, reach around, you can open it up and that's where you would put like, you know, like, I don't know, a uh, sunscreen, maybe put your cell phone in a bag. Um, you could put it in there because it's kind of easy access. And then the third compartment right here, which goes from, oh, here, about all the way to the boat. So I've heard this book can carry a total of about 350 to 360 pounds. That's the weight of the paddler and all the stuff that you can put inside. This boat, like I said, is extremely fast. It's very fun. You can really get out there. Um, I'll give one example here on Draper Lake in Oklahoma City. I'll take the dagger and we will start at the north end of the lake and we go from the north end. If you guys are in Oklahoma City, you know what I'm talking about, point 10 and kayak all the way to the dam. And this boat right here, it takes about an hour and 20 minutes, maybe sometimes up to an hour and a half to cover that distance. I think it's about four or five miles. Whereas over here in the wilderness system, Tempest 170, you can cover that distance in about 30 to 45 minutes. And that is no joke. And that is even on a windy day. Next thing, this boat right here can take any type of wind. It can take any type of waves. Uh, this boat just cuts through the waves and kind of you kind of can stay dry because it's so long by the time the water hits here you know it goes up a little bit and it really doesn't get all the way to the paddler whereas this boat over here you will get soaking wet so what would be my recommendation if you're a first time paddler and uh, you just want to get some experience, go with a shorter recreational kayak. 
that's what I did. It's always kind of good to have two kayaks anyway. That's what I think when I go paddling with someone, um, yeah, I have the extra boat. Um, but if you're thinking about going exploring, going on a large lake and, and just going out and exploring and just paddling and, and having an adventure, you want to cover a lot of space in a short period of time or maybe go kayak camping. I would definitely maybe invest a little bit more and get something like this, the wilderness system. This is a 17 foot long. I don't know if I said that or not. 70 foot long. I believe it's about 22 inches wide. So those are the pros and the cons. Those are my reviews for these two uh, really cool boats. Uh, the Dagger, Zydeco 11.0, Wilderness Systems, uh, Tempest 170. I'd recommend both of these boats. Kind of depends on what you want to do. Anyway, you guys, thanks for watching this video. Uh, be sure to hit like and subscribe. And hopefully here, now we're in the fall, I'm going to be out a little more often. And we'll be posting more videos right here on Ensco's Adventures. You guys be blessed, and I will talk to you next time.